Well, hey guys, happy December 1st. You know what that means. Today's video is gonna be my monthly favorites, but I have a lot of fails from the month of November that I'm gonna share with you in this video, things that just did not work out for me that we're gonna talk about. I reviewed the Polish Choice uh, reformulated Calm products, or, or many of them, in a video this month, and a lot of them were seriously a flop for me. And I think a lot of the tweaks and changes that they made to these products were not for the better. They were really good products at baseline, and I feel as though some of the things they did, it's just like, why, why fix it if it's not broken, right? So the two, for me, that were major fails, seriously disappointed, number one was the Polish Choice Calm Ultra Gentle Cleanser. $19, and at first when I put it on my hand and everything, worked it up a little bit and put it on my face, I thought, oh, this is kind of slippery. I uh, sort of like the feel of this, but I noticed that it didn't really lather well, and I especially noticed it when I used it to wash my face, like in front of the mirror, that it was not lathering properly at all. I was getting it where it would kind of clump up and not not adequately lather. I mean, that, that's basically it. I used this cleanser by itself uh, to try and remove the Color Science Sun Forgettable face shield. I used this cleanser in the shower and it would not take it off. It's just not delivering. So that was a fail. And then the Rescue and Repair Intensive Moisturizer. Small tube, $33. Left my skin feeling dry, plain and simple. Uh, it was not good whatsoever, which really disappoints me because I loved their pre previous moisturizers in this Calm line. In fact, in my older video on the top, my top 10 Paula's Choice products, one of those Calm moisturizers I listed in that video, and I had to go back and make an addendum now to that video saying, hey, you know, I pinned a comment saying, hey, they've changed these, I no longer recommend them. Uh, so that was definitely a fail for me. Like I, again, I don't know why why they had to go and change it. I'm nervous they're gonna change the sunscreens because I really like their the sunscreens in the Calm line. And those are the only ones that they haven't changed, nor have they changed the packaging, and I suspect they will change them. So hopefully they don't change them for the worst. Polish Choice did sell the company to, uh, what is it, Estee Lauder. And so they made the, they've been making adjustments, I guess. All right, next product that was gifted to me, and this was an epic fail for reasons you may not think. This is the Elemis Frangipani Manoi Body Oil. And I know what you're thinking. Of course, she's not gonna like a body oil with fragrance. She doesn't use body oils and she's always whining and moaning about fragrance. But I was actually excited to try this because yes, I don't use body oils, but I do like the scent of Frangipani and this smelled nice. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. This smelled nice. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna give this a go. All it is is coconut oil and fragrance. So there's nothing magical about this. Now, coconut oil, um, I have a video as a side note on the skin and hair benefits of coconut oil. Uh, it has been shown to be helpful for people who have eczema um, to use coconut oil on the skin. Some people find that it aggravates their acne. And for hair care, it has been shown to be helpful for reducing high growth fatigue. And this particular um, oil, they say you can use it on your hair and your body. So I thought maybe I'll give it a go in my hair because you know I like scented hair products. Why not give it a go? However, this gets the award for stupidest, most mind-numbingly painful packaging to ever use because it is solid as a rock. This solidifies it is solid as a rock. They tell you to get like some warm water in a bowl and put this in to melt it but it takes forever to melt all of this. It takes forever to melt this. I tried putting it on my shower ledge, maybe hoping the steam would melt it, didn't touch it. It's 70 degrees, I keep my apartment 70 degrees and it's not cold, so there's that. Um, and it solidifies very quickly after you melted it down too. The easiest way I found to get this to go from solid all the way to liquid is to set it on top of my dryer while the dryer is running. Um, for a full dryer cycle, I could get this to liquefy. The cap is also really annoying. It screws on, which I guess is kind of nice for this type of product because if you are gonna be putting this in 
in water. You don't want the water to get into your product, right? So the packaging, I guess, you know, it kind of makes sense from that regard, but it's just overall really difficult. So it smells nice, it feels nice on the skin. You know, when it comes to body oils, the reason I don't use them is I don't really think that they do too much for you. Sure, they may have some antioxidants. And again, there is research showing that coconut oil, I mean, small research, we're not talking about ma major randomized trials here. There is small research showing benefit for people with eczema using coconut oil, you know, as an alternative moisturizing ingredient. But oils, they don't really do such a great job like, sealing in hydration they're not you know they're not like the full package of just using a moisturizer they kind of give the skin a nice luminous glow it's more of an experience but oh my gosh melting this down takes forever i don't know who has time for this the only people i could think that would have time for this are those of you who take baths i don't have a i don't take baths you know a lot of people take these like enjoy taking baths in which case i could see you know sitting in the tub, you know, maybe watching a movie. Some people do that in these big bathtubs they have nowadays, or reading a book in the tub and just swirling this around in the bath water to melt it down and then putting it on the skin as soon as you get out. But man, it solidifies pretty quickly. I went on their website, because again, this was gifted to me. I went on their website and they have a few other body oils in this exact same packaging. Um, this is $58. So if you were thinking about buying this for yourself or as a gift to somebody who likes to do spa nights, I don't know who has time for it. The packaging, the process, it is just too high maintenance. Too high maintenance. That, so that was a letdown for me for sure. All right, the next failed product for me, I got four fails this month, came in my FabFitFun box. It's the Whey Detox Shampoo. I was pretty excited to try this because I love. it's a clarifying shampoo. And I use a clarifying shampoo once a week to remove hard water residue from my hair and or styling products. Hard water, it does interact with the surfactants and like your shampoos. It can leave a film on the scalp, on the hair strands, make the hair more prone to breakage. So I like using a clarifying shampoo. This one has chelators in it, which help to bind up the ions in the hard water, reducing the formation of that soap scum. And it has hydrolyzed keratin, which can help cut down on like uh, frizz. But this actually made my hair feel like it had more buildup on it. I don't know what it is about it it just it did not work out for my hair type it could just be me and my hair you know everyone's hair needs are very very different so i'm not saying it's a bad shampoo for everyone but it was a bad shampoo for me but it is a popular product i guess on their website i think they even sell refills you know you can buy the refills in the bag so clearly it's it's one that people it looks to be a popular product from what i can glean online it's thirty dollars but it did not work for me at all those were the fails um i reviewed the new products by albaline for you guys this month and the new albaline cleansing balm to me it's like okay like you really didn't change anything other than changing the ingredients but it basically looks looks the same, feels the same, does the same thing, acts the same. However, the Micellar Milk Facial Cleanser, 15, roughly $15. This is a great product for makeup removal. If you don't wanna do a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm, it works really well. And it's a product that you can actually leave behind on the skin. It's a more affordable alternative to one of my favorite products, very similar to this, the Aven, Aven Tolerance Extremely Gentle Cleansing Lotion. Uh, this performs exactly the same. And you can actually, once you use it to wipe off like your makeup, you actually can't, don't technically have to rinse it off. I do recommend rinsing it off but um, it's very mild, it's very gentle. If you have eczema sensitive skin, this would be a great option for you for makeup removal. It does a really good job, like it takes off the mascara, it leaves the skin feeling actually moisturized. It's also a good option if you are experimenting around with makeup and you don't like what you did or you messed up your eyeliner and you wanna take it off, um, this is a good, good thing to use. Cause again, you can leave it on the skin, leave that residue behind on the skin. I don't recommend doing that like regularly. But like for example, if you did eyeliner and messed it up, you want to use a little bit to get it off. Um, I think you, I think you'd be happy with this in that regard. Free of fragrance. Uh, this is a good product too, for those of you who are always asking about how to remove sunscreen when you're out camping, maybe you don't have access to running water. Consider this, it works well. The micellar cleansing lotion really does break that film of water resistant sunscreen up. So it works well, effective, gentle, 
relatively inexpensive. Give it a try if you were looking for some kind of makeup remover. A few favorites videos ago, I shared with you guys the heat protectant that I still use and love. It's the Moroccan Oil Perfect Defense um, Heat Protectant. Works well. Um, I do heat style my hair these days. Um, not every day, but I do, when, when I do, this is what I use and I love it. It was in a favorites video a while ago. But this month I discovered a product that I swear was made for me because when it comes to styling, hair styling products, 99% of them just make me look like a grease ball. They don't work on my hair. Styling mousses, gels, well, that's not true. They work on my hair only if a hairstylist puts them on my hair. If I do it, even if I do it exactly like they do it, I always look like a grease ball. Like it always just clumps onto certain strands of my hair and it just doesn't look right. This product, however, the Moroccan Oil Hydrating Styling Cream, this product is brilliant because not only does it not look greasy on my hair, um, but it has this anti-static property to it. And so it, it helps with the little flyaways, the static, any kind of frizz. It helps the hair just lay properly, but it's not greasy. It has dimethicone, betrimonium chloride, argon oil, and it does have fragrance. It smells exactly the same as a heat protectant. But what I like about this is you can put it on your hair damp and or dry. I put this on to damp, so putting it on to damp hair just takes like two pumps, uh, work it in from root to end, comb it through, um, and let your hair air dry. Or you can blow dry your hair after, although I don't believe there, there's, it's not a heat protectant, so make sure you use a heat protectant. And I haven't tried using it along with their heat protectant. I've either done one or the other. So I don't know how well they, they do if used together. Anyway, um, it's worked out really well. And then I love it on dry hair too. Like, you know, if you ever are pulling your hair back in a ponytail or whatever, and you have just like, it looks a little messy somewhere, you can just take a little bit of this pat it down, it leaves the hair very soft, but it doesn't make it look greasy. And you don't need very much. It's easy to work through the hair without it just like glomming on to a few chunks of hair here and there. It's worked really well for my hair. I don't know how well it works for all hair types and textures, but I assume, I would assume, just an assumption, I would assume if you have curly hair, wavy hair, see my hair is naturally very wavy. Curly, wavy hair, I think you would get along well with this. I like it because it's not over, it's not drying. See, a lot of styling products, to me, they dry out my hair strands too much. This is actually moisturizing. This is, it's like, if the Aveeno Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer decided to, to turn into a hair care product, <laughs> that is what this is. It's, it's very nice. It leaves the hair soft, but not greasy, and I love it. Uh, so it's, it's almost kind of like a leave-in conditioner in a sense, but it has that anti-static property that's really handy, especially, you know, when you're combing, when you comb or dry, when you're combing or brushing your hair when it's dry, it's easy for static to appear this helps get rid of that. The fragrance is nice. It's not super strong though, or headache inducing. It does linger a bit in the sense that if you put your hair up to your nose, you can smell it, but it's not like giving you a headache. So at the beginning of the month, I traveled to New York. And while I was there, I found this bag. Kedzie is the brand. And I love this thing because it holds a ton but it's not like super bulky. It's vegan, um, but it's well-made. Um, I love the detailing, the hardware. I've been wearing it just like a crossbody bag, um, and that's how I like to wear it, but you could also wear it over the shoulder. See how it's got like a thing in the back here? Holds a ton. It holds my vlogging camera. It holds a tripod. It holds my uh, wallet, my glasses, <laughs> Um, but it's not bulky and it's great for going through airport security where you have your stuff right on you. So it has a zipper here in the front that holds a decent amount of stuff. It's got a cute lining too. It's leopard print. It has a pretty big pouch here with a little, there's a little pouch here. Um, so you can fit quite a bit in there. And then this is the main body. Um, you can fit a lot in here, a lot. Uh, as you can see, I have my vlogging camera case and my eyeglass case here that's empty. Then the back has this big pouch. 
so you can slip stuff in there like I slip my phone in there. I have the hardest time finding purses and you guys know I don't buy leather. So I like the bag so much. I went on the website and I got the wallet which is vegan as well and I love it. I took everything out but um, you can put your cards here. It has a nice snap closure. And then the back you can put your photo ID and then there's a zipper pouch there. You can hold quite a bit and it slides perfectly. See it matches, matchy matchy. It matches the bag, slides perfectly in here. It doesn't take up any space. They have other patterns, other colors. They have other styles, different types of wallets. Um, super happy with the quality of these. I discovered it, like I came across it in when I was shopping with you guys in Chelsea Market. Purses that will accommodate you guys um, can, are hard to come by without being like this whole luggage tote thing. It's not super bulky, you know, like I hate purses that are like open. I just feel like somebody's gonna reach in there and steal stuff. <laughs> Um, I like I like bags that you can hold close to you. What did I watch this month? So I watched the first season of Euphoria, someone recommended. You guys who watch me, you know, I'm really into stories about addiction. So I thought I was really gonna like it, and for the most part I did. It's very graphic though. I don't think I can make it through the second season. I had to take a break. Um, I kind of felt like maybe it was a bad idea to watch it all in one or two. I watched the first season in like two days. Uh, like over a weekend and it was good. It, it draws you in like it's a compelling story. It's an interesting story. I think it was just too graphic for me and I felt like the characters didn't have a lot of depth to them. Maybe maybe in the second season you learn more about the characters. Let me know but I'm not quite ready for the second season. I need to take a break from it. It, it left me kind of feeling down and dark <laughs> so I had to take a break from it. Uh, and so I watched that and that's about it. Anyway, y'all, that is everything I loved and hated from November. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you're having a great first day of December if you're watching this on the first or whenever you're watching this, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.